This is the story, Rajya's Ray of Hope, One Girl's Dream of an Education. My cousins and I raced down the road to see what the excitement was about. Men and women were gathering around the empty lot in our village. Anytime we played in that lot, I'd found shards of clay tiles and not much else. This day, ribbons brightened the dry earth. Important looking adults were laying a large stone on the ground, and women passed out chocolates wrapped in shiny papers. My little sister Zara and I collected as many as we could and stuffed them into our pockets before asking for more. My grandfather spotted us and walked over. I hung my head, afraid he would scold us for taking more than our share of the candy. Instead, Baba Guy pointed proudly to the large cornerstone. This is where my school once stood. I knew Baba Guy had gone to school. I loved hearing his stories about learning to read and write and calculate numbers. It sounded so exciting. What happened to it? asked my cousin Hamid. Baba Guy looked at the ground. It was destroyed by 17 years of war. But what's happening today? I asked. The Nauru celebrations are over. They are building a new school for girls, said Baba Guy. A school for girls? Every night I fell asleep dreaming about going to school like my brothers. Please, Baba Guy, asked Baba. Ask Baba and Aziz if I may go. I must go. That evening, like most evenings, I sat by my brothers, Jamil and Kareem, as they studied by lantern light. They attended the boys' school in the next village. Baba, my father, worked on our farm with my uncles and cousins. My two eldest brothers, Aziz and Ahmad, worked at the quarry, cutting stones. They never wanted to go to school. Like us girls, they could not read or write. Jamil, may I have a piece of paper? I asked. <coughs> Why do you need paper? You don't have homework. You can't even write, said Kareem. Yes, I could write. I had memorized the Dari alphabet and I could spell my name, but I was afraid to tell my brothers. What if they wouldn't let me sit with them? So I kept quiet. Whenever I found Baba Gee alone, I would whisper in his ear, have you spoken to Baba and Aziz yet? I will. I will, my dear Razia, Baba would Baba Gee would say as he patted my head. It was always, I will. So I turned to my mother for help. Bibi, have you seen what they are building on the empty lot? Baba Gee says it will be a school for girls. Yes, I know, Bibi answered as she hurried me and Zara to join our cousins. They were on their way to the village Tandor to bake naan for dinner. I took my sister's hand. Please, Bibi, I want to go to school. Girls from our village are registering. Girls from other villages, too. Sarah told me that when we played hopscotch yesterday, Bibi handed us our dough and shooed us out the door. I called back. I need to learn to read and write, Bibi. I promise to teach you. Please talk to Baba and Aziz. I will, I will, said Bibi. She sounded just like Baba Gee. Months passed as I watched the school rise brick by brick from the dirt, but neither Bibi nor Baba Guy ever had an answer. At the beginning of March, the construction crew covered the bricks with white stucco that made the new school shine in the sunlight. They painted the door red as bright as the flames of the tan door. Each morning as I swept the courtyard, I heard girls chatter about the nice woman who started the school and the teachers from Kabul. Each afternoon as I fetched water from the well, I saw girls on their way home from registration carrying crisp new school uniforms over their arms. One night as I lay on my mattress, I heard Baba Guy call my father, call my father, brothers, and uncles to a family meeting. I propped myself up to catch every word of their talk. Baba Guy started, started the jirga. Razia wants to attend the new girls' school in the village, and I support her desire. 
Some of you are too young to remember, and some of you were not even born, but before the occupation of our country, before the civil wars and before the Taliban, women in Afghanistan were educated. They were doctors, government workers, and journalists. It is time to give our daughters and granddaughters in D. Subus the chance to read and write. Our family and our country will be stronger for it. I couldn't believe my ears. Would I be allowed to go to school? The jirga continued. It was Uncle Akib's turn to speak. Our girls need to help their mothers at home. We need Razia to work in the orchards too, Uncle Ali added. Our trees are just coming back after years of drought, and Razia harvests almonds and peaches faster than any of us. Razia can complete her chores before and after school. That will be the condition of her enrollment, Baba Ghi replied. Next, you want Razia to go into town to shop by herself, said my father, wrinkling his forehead. Or for women to shed their burqas in public, my brother Ahmad added. My brother Aziz ended the jirga. Razia is not going. Those four simple words made my heart sink. The next morning, I woke with the sun to practice my reading. From under my pillow, I took out scraps of newspaper that the baker wrapped around our freshly baked naan. Even if I couldn't go to school, I was determined to be the kind of woman Baba Ghee had described, a woman who helped others through her work inside and outside her home. After my morning chores, I walked to the school. I passed a stone wall being built around the school, around the school grounds, and I knocked on the bright red door. A woman opened it and greeted me with a smile. Hello, my name is Razia John. Come in, please. I entered a different world. Fresh white hallways, clean classrooms, with desks, chalkboards, books, paper, and pencils, all in one place. It was unbelievable. I introduced myself. My name is Razia, too. I want to come to your school, but my, <clears throat> excuse me, my brother and father will not give me permission. I told Razia, John, what I'd overheard at, in, at the jar, jirga. Razia John, Jan, offered to come home with me and speak to Baba Ghi. Maybe together they could convince the other men to let me attend school. As soon as Razia Jan and I arrived, I ran off to find Baba Ghi. Baba Ghi, the Mulam Shabia from the New Girls School, is here to speak to you. Please come greet her. Bring Baba and Bibi. I spoke a mile a minute so as not to waste any time. Baba Ghi didn't look surprised to learn I had gone to the school on my own. He and Razia Jan spoke privately for several minutes. Then Baba Ghi excused himself to find my father and mother. I stayed out of sight when the three returned to speak to Razia Jan. Razia Jan thanked my family for their time. Then she described how her school would teach Dari, English, Pashto, math, health, and hygiene to younger girls. As the girls got older, the school would teach them how to read the Quran, as well as geography, science, history, and algebra. Razia Jan also explained how her school would provide textbooks, a new uniform, and healthy lunches for all students. Best of all, she said, the school would be free. Baba sounded surprised to hear that everything the school about everything the school would provide. He told Razia Jan he would speak to my brother, Aziz, when he returned from the quarry. But just then, Aziz walked in. Baba Ghi spoke up, Aziz, I did not realize you were home. Razia Jan turned and introduced herself and her school. She knew Aziz was the one to convince. I ask for your tolerance, if not support, for Razia's education. Please consider, if men are the backbone of Afghanistan, the women are the eyes of our country. Without an education, we will all be blind. Aziz shook Razia Jan's hand and walked out of the room. I followed him. <coughs> Aga Jan, why are you home so early? Are you feeling sick? I asked. His face was pale and sweaty. Yes, I have a fever. My body aches all over. I stopped for medicine on my way home, but I need... Kareem or Jamil to read the directions to me. Please get me some water. Aziz closed his eyes. I poured a glass of water and brought it to Aziz. 
While he dozed, I picked up the medicine bottle and slowly sounded out the directions. I looked up and saw Aziz watching me. How do you know how to read? He asked. He listened to Jamil and Kareem study every night, I said, counting out his pills accordingly. According to the directions, please, Aga Jan, please let me go to school. I will be able to help the family even more if I do. Aziz took his medicine and smiled. Then he went back to rest without uttering a word. Only a couple of days remained before Nuru's and the opening of the girls' school. I sat on the stoop scrubbing potatoes for the evening soup. If I could not attend school, I would ask my friends to share with me what they learned every day. That would be second best, yet far from perfect. As I picked up the last potato, I heard Aziz approach. Razia, he said. I peeled the potato quickly to avoid his gaze. I have reconsidered. I learned this morning that stones from my quarry are being used to build a wall around the girls' school. Aziz paused. I did not move or even make a sound. Now I trust that you will be safe in that building, my precious sister. You may attend Razia John's school. I couldn't contain myself. I leapt up and threw my arms around Aziz. I promised to stay clear of danger. Thank you. But you must complete your household chores before and after classes, Aziz continued. I will not let you down. Thank you. Soon after, my family celebrated Nauru's in the orchards. We picnicked under the almond blossoms that were the first bloom of spring, and now the sign of a new school year. On the first day of school, Razia Jan greeted all the students at the gates of the Zabuli Education Center. Salam, elkam, welcome. She patted each of us on the back, and we walked through the bright red door of our beautiful new school. I was led to the third grade classroom, my teacher introduced herself and then asked each of us to say our name and what we wanted to be when we grew up. My friend Sarah threw her hand up first. My name is Sarah and I want to be an engineer when I grow up. What is an engineer? She blurted out with Marwa blurted out without being called upon. I am too young to know that, but I know when I become one, I will tell you all about it, Sarah explained. Rahila waved her arms and our teacher picked her next. I am Rahila, and I want to be a doctor. I will build a clinic in our village and treat all the children for free. I spoke last. I have always dreamed of being a teacher, and I promised my mother and my oldest brother Aziz that I would practice on them. And that is the conclusion of our story. There's also a section about education for everyone. Um, and a photograph down here of Razia Jan with students in the school. Thank you for listening to the story. Razia's Ray of Hope.